on this 26 minutes Dakar. A little fall, but how much time would it cost Franz Verhoeven? In the car section, Carlos Sainz is also suffering. Could he keep hold of his lead? In the truck category, De Roy is looking for a third straight victory. Can he make it three out of three on Dakar 2013? In Dakar World, we meet Gerland Shishri and have a tour around his rather large tent. And in Dakar Legend, we learn all about the first victory for the Dakar master, Stefan Pederhansel. All the news, all the action on this 26 minutes Dakar, Pisco to Nazca. Previously in the bikes. The drama has already begun for some. And the pace has been set by the young chargers, like Juan Bereda. He's fully focused on being flat out and fulfilling his ambition. The ambition of the team is to win. And we'll do all we can to win this Dakar. For four-time champion Sil de Prayer, it's far more relaxing strategy, keeping calm and getting to the end is key for victory. I want to leave Peru without losing too much time. Of course, this is not where the Dakar is won. Behind, there are lots of much faster riders, but they'll have to navigate. So with the young chargers, can the old guard still hold on? Will still the prayer be the winner in Santiago? This will be tough. Similar dunes that claimed so many last year welcome competitors just three legs in. The 243 kilometer stage takes us to Nazca to the Pampa de Juari. The Cerro Vuesta del Diablo, a stunning range of dunes, but an obstacle for the Dakar runners. I'm starting 12. There's not too much dust. There is, of course, some sand at the beginning, so it shouldn't be too much trouble for me to overtake. It should be good. We're going to see what these young, fast wolves can do when they uh, open the stage. Juan Barreda was the man he was talking about. A daunting moment. He's only experienced this once before on the Dakar. On that day, one year ago, he crashed. No such catastrophe this year, but he did damage a rear wheel, which cost him a lot of time. With one track to follow, Juan Pedrero traced his fellow Catalan through the early dunes, but then found himself alone out front. Again, not a familiar place for him either. It's Matt Fish's job to make sure Bereda is safe and running and therefore it was him that had to stop and help his Spanish teammates, therefore losing time as well. But it was really significant for all four of the front men. Pedrero lost 30 minutes. Fish and Bereda even more. Kurt Caselli here, who ended up second on the road, also struggled in his first time in Dakar conditions. After a disappointing day two, Franz Verhoeven was on the usual full attack this morning. Even this crash didn't slow him down. He managed to finish eighth. It was a stunning stage. It's 
been a quiet run for Palandros Ulvesetta so far. Once again, being run by his own team, he took a ninth and a tenth and eleventh today. That means he's third overall on his KTM. Part of the huge Tamaragal squad, Daniel Gouet equals his best ever result in his three-year Dakar career. Six today, he was the best Honda after Rodriguez ran out of fuel with 10 kilometers to go. Into the top five then, and Polish star Kuba Pogonski had a really good day three. A polar opposite to what happened last time when he had to retire. Third in the World Championships, he aims just to finish this 2013 edition. In the Husqvarna squad are two teammates of two. While Breda and Fish were having trouble, Alessandro Bacuri and his teammate were loving this third stage. Only 31st yesterday, he stormed to fourth, just shy of Cyril Depré. The four-time champion, by his own admission, was hardly a spectacular ride today, but it was safe and enough for him to come home first bike alongside Faria and Castor. It means Dupré now leads the rally. It was a good stage. I didn't really do anything particularly extraordinary, but I got some important points in the general standings. I arrived here having led since kilometer 190. And of course, I started 20 minutes behind Pedrero and Bereda, so I think this was a good strike. Navigational errors on day two meant Portuguese Paulo Gonçalves lost a lot of time, and he had to start 22nd today. Because of this, he pushed extra hard. And when the Husqvarna rider has his head down, he absolutely flies. He was just one minute behind the winner of the stage. And that was Francisco Lopez, the Chilean taking his second stage victory in three days and proving once again that he does have the pace to win. Having lost time, being the lead bike into day two, he'll be cautious not to have the same mistake again tomorrow. It's always easier to start behind, because, but that's the race. If I can win, I need to try, but I'm happy. Tomorrow will be hard, and I hope to go well. So the results today, Lopez, Consalves, Depré, Boturi a good result in fourth, and Brugonski for Poland in fifth position. It does, of course, alter the overall standings quite heavily. Depré now leads by two minutes and 50 seconds over Lopez, Ulvesetta up to third, then two Yamahas, Pa, Castor in the top five. For the quads, it was time to get serious. These four-wheel machines are easier to ride in the dunes than their two-wheel drivers, but mistakes will cost. No mistakes though for Marcus Patronelli, but a puncture did cost him some time today. It spurred the Yamaha rider on to smash his opponents by 15 minutes. Without the puncture, who knows what damage he could have done in the overall. On board with Argentine Thomas Maffei, who seems to be having a really hard first week. Not on form, he lost over an hour today with more problems. On the flip side, Rafael Sonic starred. Conscious not to push too hard, he actually felt his second position pace was too good for day three did get lost which cost him most of the time he lost and still needs to find a good rhythm to replicate his third in 2009. <laughs> Having a bad day Sebastian Husseini lost time in the early running of the stage so he had to find 17 minutes to equal Patronelli's pace in the remaining 200 kilometers. In the end, he actually lost three more, the lion's share of his gap in the general standings. Third in the overall, Ignacio Cassell. 
a far more consistent ride so far this year, challenging Patronelli. Another fifth position today means he now lies just shy half an hour behind his rivals. Coming next, we have all the action from the car category, Mini versus Buggy. Yesterday was the first real Dakar stage. It was hot, it was dusty, and it was heavily demanding. It may have been just a loop around Pisco of 242 kilometers, but more nightmares are certainly to follow.